Nosferatu are one of the oldest and the most iconic types of vampires used in television, movies, tabletop games like we're talking about now. Typically, they are used in fantasy settings or some version of the past. Starfinder is a game of future science fiction, as well as it's a fantasy setting in space. The Nosferatu also exist when it comes to Starfinder, so how has it been adapted to live and work with a science fiction fantasy setting? First, we're going to talk about Nosferatu in the context of Starfinder and what it is. Then we can move on to their abilities and how you can use them in your games. So let's just jump into it. In Starfinder, the Nosferatu still has their iconic appearance. Their skin shows as either a bruised purpley color or stark white. They also have incredible physical strength. They are very tall and their claws, well, those are also quite long. They very much have the appearance of something that is undead, which is what the vampires are. And a Nosferatu is also completely hairless. Although it's rare to run into one, if you do, it's not uncommon for them to be wearing some kind of wig or hairpiece. Now, the style of which depends entirely on the Nosferatu, so it will match their personality, whether they take a blend in approach or whether they like to stand out in a crowd like this guy. And this manicured outward appearance also reflects in a Nosferatu's attire. They like to make sure that the whole ensemble is complete. Nosferatu have also lived an incredibly long time. They have seen civilizations rise. They have seen civilizations fall. Many were there before the gap. These incredibly long lifespans have also played havoc with many of the Nosferatu's minds. Some have gone crazy because of how long they've lived, how much they've seen destroyed, and that's all they want to do is they want to consume, they feed, they destroy. This does create a bit of a small problem or at least a challenge for these particular groups of Nosferatu because when they feed, they tend to feed a lot and it gets pretty messy. And Nosferatus are not simply created. They can't go out like other vampires, such as the Moroi, and just make more of them. But since we're on the topic of feeding, if you wouldn't mind helping me feed the YouTube algorithm by hitting the like button, I would greatly appreciate it. Outside of their outward appearance and some of their quirky fashion attire, Nosferatu are different from other vampires in the sense that they have a unnatural connection to disease. Back in the good old days, the Nosferatu were commonly associated with the plague and with rats. And while these associations are still there in Starfinder, they have been evolved. Diseases are still associated, they still follow the Nosferatu around. However, it's not simply limited to the plague anymore. The Nosferatu serve as a host for many types of alien diseases now. They are born and spread from the Nosferatu. Thus, depending on where they have set up shop, will change or alter the disease that they spread. For older Nosferatu, the ones that were born before the gap, they will still have the same classic plague. Any of the new Nosferatu, the ones that were born during the gap or after, they were born out of a disease, a concentration of some form of alien plague. In the past, traditional wisdom has dictated that Nosferatus could not stand the smell of garlic or the sight of a holy symbol from a non-evil deity. Now, in reality, these are more of a mild irritant than anything else. Nosferatu also don't like having mirrors around, not because it hurts them or traps their soul in some way, or lack thereof because they're undead, more so because it's easier to tell you're a vampire when you're not giving a reflection in the mirror. The Nosferatu also tend to have large layers, large estates, large manors, whatever you want to call them. Because they've lived a very long time, they have been able to manage money, grow wealth, personal wealth, which they then use to buy large layers, construct large mansions so that they can live their secluded life. But the ultimate best deterrent is to not visit one of these layers. Nosferatu will try to invite people to their lair 
invite victims, make their area more appealing, or give the appearance of appealing, it's easier to get people to come inside and come into their lair versus them going into someone else's home or someone else's property. They cannot enter a property without being invited. There is one small drawback to these large layers, and that is the fact that because a Nosferatu is a plague bearer, they spread disease and pestilence. When they have one dedicated area to be, hence their layer, you tend to get outbreaks of disease around this. And for the careless Nosferatu, this has led to them being found out. In modern society, the Nosferatu are still elusive. They don't like to be found out. They do have incredible powers of stealth, and they use this to maneuver about the galaxy without being seen, except by their victims, of course. But Nosferatu feel that media portrayals of them in television, movies, hollow vids, it's just completely unfair. It's even been rumored that some Nosferatu have gathered together to complain about these media portrayals. They also discuss what could have been done better or shown them in a more positive light. All while sipping blood from fancy glasses. Pinkies out. If you're gonna use a Nosferatu as your evil bad guy or maybe even have your players come across one, there's a few things you need to know. First, they have fast healing five. That means every round they heal five hit points and a round is six seconds of time. They also have swarm flight, which I will talk about in a minute, five damage resistance to wood and piercing, as well as the regular undead immunities, as well as resistances to cold, electricity, and sonic damages of 10. I would not recommend putting a level 1 party or even a low level party against one of these creatures because they are quite significant, they are quite powerful. They can move at a speed of 30 feet per round, they also have spider climb which allows them to move up walls at their walking speed. They also have some spell like abilities that they can use several times per day. Telekinesis, they can do this once per day and three times a day they can use Instant Virus. They also have the abilities of Blood Drain, Dominate, and Plague Bearer, which I will talk about in just a second. Blood Drain is pretty self-explanatory. It's how the Nosferatu feeds. It gives the target a negative one level, and it gives the Vampire, or the Nosferatu, five temporary hit points for an hour. I would also argue that that's how long the negative level lasts. With Dominate, they can take over your mind and make you do their bidding. There's also the Nosferatu weaknesses, we've talked a lot about those already. Garlic, holy symbols, mirrors. A Nosferatu must stay at least five feet away from one of these things unless they destroy it. Now, Plague Bearer means if you've been bitten by the Nosferatu or if you've been scratched by their claws, you can receive a disease that is inherent to the Nosferatu. It's not good news for you if you get this. Nosferatu also have the Plague Speaker ability. This allows them to communicate with animals traditionally associated with spreading disease. So rats are going to be your big one here, but if you have an alien species on your world that is known to spread disease, the Nosferatu can speak to it. The Akata would be an example of one of these. They also happen to be one of my favorite monsters when it comes to Starfinder, but even though the Nosferatu can communicate with these animals, it doesn't mean that these animals like the Nosferatu or will automatically do everything that they have asked. It just simply means they can communicate. Now we have to talk about Swarm Form and Swarm Flight. They are kind of the same thing, but just a little difference here. The Nosferatu is able to break themselves down into a swarm of vermin, a swarm of rodents, or even a form that flies as long as it's associated with being a spreader of disease. And all of these forms will be personalized to the Nosferatu. When they are in swarm form, they can attack, or if it's a flying swarm, they have a increased fly speed. Now swarm flight, this happens when a Nosferatu is reduced to zero hit points. When you do this, a Nosferatu is not dead. They just go into their swarm form, and that form, that swarm, has to go find its coffin, its place that the Nosferatu rests in. If it doesn't make it there within one hour, the Nosferatu dies. For GMs, when you're in swarm flight, extra damage to this form does basically nothing. If they do make it back to their coffin, they have one hour to gain their first hit point back, and then your regen 5 starts happening every six seconds after that. Now, how can you incorporate these into your Starfinder game? 
One good way to do this would be a rogue spaceship. Nosferatu have been known to hide out on spaceships for their interstellar travels. The problem for the crew is when this happens, disease and plague spreads throughout the ship, killing basically everyone except for the Nosferatu. So when the ship lands or makes it to where it's going to go, it's full of diseased corpses. Maybe your player group has come across one of these rogue spaceships. It's come off course and hasn't been able to land. A Nosferatu is stuck inside the spaceship. Maybe your players are planet side and they're invited to a mysterious estate. Disease and plague has been starting to spread throughout the population and no one knows why, only that there is no cure. Maybe a Nosferatu contacts and hires the services of your group to help contain their plague because they don't want to cause any problems for anyone. They want to just be left alone and not infecting a population with their disease is a good way to not get found out. I wouldn't take this as far as a 40th century Curse of Strahd, although you could do that. I think it would be difficult to convert Curse of Strahd into a science fiction setting. I think there's a lot you can do when it comes to vampires in space, not only with the Nosferatu, but also with other types of vampires such as the Moroi. They are more your garden variety vampire and the video for them is on the screen now. And thank you to all of my patron supporters. My name's Nathaniel. Thanks for stopping by everyone.